Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Good, good, very good. I mean, I met you during the screening in Delhi, and I told you then. I'm telling it to you again. I love the film. Thank What you. have you created? I mean, wow! Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. How are you absorbing all the love and appreciation the film is receiving? Yeah, it's it's a new kind of a thing, right? Uh, I was telling a friend that you know, uh, I'm usually used to like, hey, baki sab ko pasand nahi hai, lekin mere ko aayi. It's always a very cult tribe. Yes. Feeling, but this has been like pretty overwhelming and uh, unanimous. So it's it's very different. I mean, we know it's a it's an adaptation from a Japanese book, but you know when you create something for the Indian audiences, you need to add a lot of elements. I want to understand what were those elements for you. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, the thing was that human uh, nature is always the same, right? It is only the superficial things that kind of uh, change. In that sense, geography changes, uh, and 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 you just go in with that progression. But the base of the story doesn't need to change. What it is trying to say, whether one is in Japan, in America, in India, right. it's the same story. Uh, but then, the, at least the good thing is we are trained to just at least uh, uh, invent whatever fantasy story we might uh, be weaving. Uh, at least our grounding is in reality right. so i think that doesn't come too difficult because having worked with anurag for such a long time uh, at least you know the, the grounding and the foundation is uh, key at least this won't sound alien or this won't sound trying to be something else right it will be what it is but you know baba it was like twist after twist and when we thought okay now it's over i i won't give out spoilers but again there was something i mean what i really want to understand your mind what's there inside it first is the book second is the fantastic screenplay by uh, logesh chandigarh uh, i love him he is also going to be one of the good directors in the coming times he's a great mind uh, and after that uh, you know a great set of actors great set of crew so everyone came together uh, at the right time um uh, and hopefully in the right place which was the film yes. uh, and they trusted me so i'm grateful for that and uh, so yeah i mean after that you keep building on yeah you keep building on and because the the source material is so good uh, that you know it just can keep getting better if you have the right intention and how did you go about the casting was it your idea to cast uh, raj radhika huma how was it So casting, what happens is you obviously uh, get in with everyone, the producer, the casting director, the ads. Everyone sit, everyone give their suggestions, uh, and uh, and somehow these things just click. Uh, so there is there is it's always a miracle. Uh, why these names strike you? Why that call happens? Why do do they respond? Why did they have free time? It all just aligns. It's a power cast. I mean, it's a power cast. It's an, it's an incredible. In fact, it's almost like why didn't anyone else did that? because they've always there they're great capable actors yes. and uh, and yeah and they've been around for 10 12 years and let me let me tell you it's not just raj huma and radhika all the other actors uh beat sikandar or anyone else they uh, the the part that they have played they're like bang on so yeah so uh, sikandar i want always wanted to work with him after i had seen him in tere bin laden 2 oh yes uh, it's a, it's a yeah it's a film that not many have seen Uh, but when I saw Sikku, I was like, I'm going to work with this guy. I didn't know when or what script and all. But when this character came along, uh, the first call went to him. Uh, he was shooting in Indonesia then for another project. Uh, he re- quickly read the script. We had a couple of sessions on Zoom, and that was it. And uh, and I knew he's going to nail it. Right. You know, Vasan. One thing that I have seen when I you look at your body of work, you are an incredible writer and a director. but what we have seen you don't give a film after film i really want to understand what keeps you you know uh what, what makes you stop i mean we want more from you so even i don't want to stop it's just that putting together stuff and making people believe in a very particular vision it takes I time uh, and i also don't hold grudges because it's money at stake right and the film that you see is not really the film that you start with they only seeing the script and they're looking at a digital guy mumbling things so so from there to the film it it takes a while uh, and kudos to the people who stand by it 
who give me that space especially people like uh, sanjay rautre sarita diksha who are the producers chetan from netflix the entire netflix team and monica shergill who really just said okay you know this is the guy give him the resources let him make the film she has a vision so yes so no, that it's a big deal for people to just give it to some because it's very difficult for people to foresee a film uh yeah, yeah. also you know i think you can at least explain me in a better way uh when we talk about films we always talk about we have recently started but we talk about box office numbers but when a film is releasing on on an ott platform like netflix i want to understand what are the parameters to judge success or you know measure success so very soon we'll be be flooded with those numbers as well yeah. or my numbers the number one uh, number one top 10 Uh, number one top ten in the world in which city in which country in which sit everything will come right so all those things will be the metrics that will be fed to us uh, and also then there'll be like so many views in the first week so many views in the third week all that will happen so then always a metric that we can't escape uh, because uh, I think it's human nature to quantify uh, right. because if, if we know that someone's won the olympic gold we want to know how many seconds or how with how many seconds the second one couldn't make it to gold if if you don't know india has won the match we know the bowling statistics the fielding statistics batting statistics so we always want to quantify we can't escape that so so but as a director as a writer i would want to understand how important are these box not not of course ott but box office numbers for you so it becomes important to set up the next project it's not really the previous one it doesn't matter because that's done right uh but if if the numbers are great in whatever quantity whether it's the omax whether it's the data collected through uh the streaming platforms or its box office numbers it helps me pitch myself better to a producer it gets me more resources maybe a bigger actor who will give me more money will hear my script i don't know so So it's important Everyone would want to hear your script, so yes, there is no doubt about it. No one knows, yeah. But but yeah, but it's just it's just that the conventional success helps you mark next project. True, it's important for that. But you know, recently we saw the biggest of films also didn't work well. What, according to you, as a director, as a person who's there in the industry, are the reasons, possible reasons? And and let me tell you, it's not north versus south because even southern films are not doing too well. We just talk about a few. Correct. That I agree. Uh, I think once uh, you back a vision, but backing a vision is also not a guarantee to success. Filmmaking is an expensive medium, but it is also about individual expression because. there is so much for the audience now that you can't give them what they have already predicted so uh, so you have to surprise them but surprising them can go either way so it is up to the team here that uh, how confident they are about following a vision is the vision being muddled with too many heads like the actor also the director also the producer also so you know it it all depends as to what combination is there and how much so the other person is trusting the other person But so, you know, yeah. Recently, during this World Cinema Day, we saw that people went out and to to the theaters and watched the film because they could afford the tickets. Uh, I think after the pandemic, the spending capacity has also changed. Do you think that's that's one of the factors? If ticket pricing can be looked at, yes, and also with the looming uh, supposed recession around the corner, yes. we were scared, and uh, and uh, and I think the footfalls have always been about price. it's always been about price we were just uh, throwing a blind eye to it right once you regulate it uh, people will come back no one i mean all that comfort of your house has been since vhs it has spin since satellite i agree but if you regulate the price if you get it at a reasonable number people would want to step out it's there's no greater experience than sitting in a cinema hall with strangers i agree and enjoying a film and it's not about spectacle it's not about vfx a cinema hall experience is a cinema hall experience Exactly. Whether it's yeah, whether it's art house, whether it's Asghar Farhadi, whether it's James Cameron, doesn't matter. True. It's a spectacle. Even Asghar Farhadi is a spectacle. Of course, I mean yeah. yes. Uh, you know, from peddlers to mud kodar ni hota, and now to Monica Omar Darling. I want to understand how have you evolved as a director, as a writer, and how do you think the industry has evolved along with that? 
so the industry is too big an entity so uh, i think the cycles have been repeated so many number of times i think even in the 1920s it would have gone into the same cycle 50s 60s post world war and we keep reacting to world events and the film industry you know we have a correlation and we keep going through our cycles i think that's a very biggish macro thing to look at so that i wouldn't know but me of course i'm not the same guy who was who i was 10 years ago uh but hopefully the sincerity is the same or at least i shouldn't have forgotten the reason why i'm making films i think that shouldn't change rest every, everything will evolve will change and uh, no matter how much i think i have not of course i will have you have you started thinking more commercially or you still want to you know go out and make what you want to like marco dad ne hota probably uh, back then people didn't take it that well accepted that well but today it's cult like it's it we we would want to watch it and you know so are you like focusing on that that i'll do whatever i want to or in uh, more numbers now I, i i don't know i think every every script when it comes you actually starting from scratch yes uh, i think there can be no arrogance about that because every new story requires a whole new approach a whole new me so i think the only way to do is just start with some amount of humility and then build on it so mm-hmm. as long as that is a process i think i'm somewhere will keep going on. i am sure i am sure and you know when i watch monica my darling on mat ko dard nahi hota one thing i can say is even raman raghav 2.0 one thing i can say is you have a creative mind i don't know what's the inside your mind but there's something unique so yes thank you thank you so much vasan what else are we going to watch from you please don't stop just keep giving us good content we will we will as as much as possible i mean that's what we are here for i mean this is what we really left everything to you know and have no plan b and just Yes. In the movies, and we will try and tell stories. So, do you have anything in your mind, or are you working on something that you can discuss? Writing, writing, writing with a couple of direct uh, writers, collaborating with them. Uh, hopefully, as and when. Yeah. Even I'm dying to get back uh, to be a deep dive into a film. Nice. What do you enjoy more, Vasan, writing or directing, or is it like a mix? Both. And now that I'm uh, completely acting? Old, acting, never. No, never. No. no. <laughs> but now that i'm uh, open to collaborating with writers it's even more fun uh, it's not a lonely suffocating st- process you know writing alone is torture and i think i've gone through it enough but collaborating is so liberating and uh, is it? it it is it is it is incredible but is it not like we we've heard too many cooks spoil the broth is no, it no. not that uh, at least the people i'm working with like yogesh has been such an incredibly secure collaborator uh he t- he's literally given me his baby and said run with it so yogesh has been like incredible because he's a great artist himself so he yes. understands what is my need uh to express myself so uh and also the other writers i'm working with i think they all come from the same mindset uh, incredibly talented and uh, incredibly secure and incredibly trusting right and that that's important to find people who are similar who, who think similarly correct correct yeah okay so coming back to monica oh my darling i want to understand were there any because it's raj it's huma it's radhika i mean radhika was like i loved uh, acp naidu so yes the, you know the beauty about the film was it's a suspe- it's, it's it's a thriller but you know there's comedy and we were like on the edge of our seats to just know what's next i want to understand were there any behind the scene moments that we didn't see in the film but was special or were, were you know worthy to remember Oh, the entire thing, yeah, because we were shooting after the second wave. Uh, almost every day, we weren't sure if we have a location, but we were stuck with the dates because they are busy. Actors will move on, so every day we were discovering locations, hunting. So it almost it's a studio film done in a very indie way, uh, which is something that was super scary at when it was happening. Uh, but that is what I think gave us also a sense of adventure, uh, and also kudos to Netflix who let us make it this way. Yeah. because the uh, times were so uncertain after the second wave uh, we didn't know whether we could shoot at night not shoot at nights what are the locations available not available sure and we were improvising every day with so much at stake so i think that kind of gave us this uh, yeah this really fantasy adventure that was happening behind the scenes also not knowing what is tomorrow okay 
I mean, thank you for your time, and I would really want to also let you know the music was really nice. 